call for Georgia to send troops to Ukraine, opening a second front against Russia, is also on agenda. Georgia has been repeatedly pushed into a conflict with Russia, with certain friends and foes urging Tbilisi to impose sanctions on the country and even to deploy troops to Ukraine, the president of the Georgian parliament, Shalva Papuashvili, has said. Speaking to reporters, the House Speaker said the country had been repeatedly bombarded with such demands, both in public and in private. Certain friends and foes have been pushing us into this so that we would send fighters to Ukraine, which would have directly meant war with Russia, he explained. Top Ukrainian officials, including the former head of the National Security Council, Alexei Danilov, have repeatedly urged Georgia to open a second front against Russia, with the calls consistently shot down by Tbilisi. While Papuashvili did not mention any actors in particular, he implied that members of the US-led NATO bloc were among them. With such actions demanded for some unknown reason from Georgia, NATO states themselves were abstaining from sending in their own military, he said. Apart from demands to enter the conflict directly, Georgia has for long been facing pressure to join Western sanctions against Moscow, he also noted. Non-state actors have been pushing Georgia into war with Russia as well, Papuashvili claimed, stating that non-governmental organizations that held rallies in Tbilisi with similar calls have also demanded our troops be sent to Ukraine. The speaker's jab at the NGOs comes as the country continues to experience domestic unrest and foreign pressure over its draft foreign agents legislation requiring these organizations and individuals receiving over 20% of their funding from abroad to register and disclose their sources of income. The controversial bill ended up being shelved amid mass protests and foreign pressure last year with the new attempt to pass its slightly modified version running into the same troubles. However, the Georgian government has stood its ground and vowed to adopt the bill no matter what. While Tbilisi has maintained an explicitly neutral stance on the Ukrainian conflict, a sizable number of mercenaries originating from the country have been fighting on Kiev's behalf. Baltic states and Poland may deploy troops to Ukraine if Russia succeeds. The Baltic states and Poland do not rule out sending their troops to Ukraine if Russia succeeds on the battlefield, reports German media The Spiegel. According to Spiegel, Baltic MPs warned representatives of the German government about the consequences of Berlin's policy towards the Ukraine war on the sidelines of the Lennart Meri Conference on Foreign and Security Policy, which took place in the Estonian capital last week. Germany refuses to provide the Ukrainian army with long-range weapons and prohibits the Ukrainian armed forces from striking Russian territory with Western weapons. They argue that if the Russians manage to make a strategic breakthrough in eastern Ukraine because the West is only half-heartedly helping Kyiv, the situation could escalate dramatically. In that case, the Baltic states and Poland would not wait for Russian troops to deploy on their borders. Baltic politicians warned but would send troops to Ukraine themselves. And it was clear that this would mean NATO would become a party to the war, the article says. As Spiegel explains, this is exactly the scenario that German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and US President Joe Biden fear. Those who want to limit the war through excessive restraint actually risk getting it out of control, the media says. French President Emmanuel Macron was the first to voice the possibility of sending Western troops to Ukraine. But Macron's idea was supported only by the Baltic states and Poland, while the rest of NATO countries, including Germany, criticized the French leader's statement. Recently, the New York Times reported that NATO was discussing the possibility of sending military instructors to Ukraine to train soldiers. Currently, NATO troops are training Ukrainian soldiers abroad. President Volodymyr Zelensky also voiced the idea of deploying NATO instructors to Ukraine. He explained that this could speed up the training of the Ukrainian military as they would not have to be sent to Poland, Germany or Britain. Drones saved Ukraine from defeat amid broken allies' promises. Drones have become a lifeline for the Ukrainian army, which is forced to fight against superior aggressor forces having an acute shortage of artillery ammunition and soldiers. This is stated in a reporting article by the New York Times. The publication's correspondent got acquainted with the work of the unmanned aircraft unit under the leadership of 33-year-old senior Lieutenant Yuri Fedorenko, widely known under the callsign Achilles. 
For months, his drone teams, part of the 92nd Air Assault Brigade, filled gaps in Ukrainian defenses, holding off a Russian incursion targeting Chasov Yar. Teams are working day and night, attacking Russian armored vehicles, dropping explosives on Russian positions, and using their drones to ferry supplies to Ukrainian soldiers along the front line, writes the New York Times. According to Achilles, without drones, Ukraine would have already been defeated in the war and the Russians would have been in Kyiv. The military man proudly showed reporters his workshops where engineers modify and test drones. At the same time, he expressed anger and disappointment at the broken promises of Western allies and the losses he said Ukraine suffered as a result. We have an absolutely absurd situation. Imagine a boxing match where there are equal boxers, but one of them can hit once and his opponent can hit 10 times. This is an absolute theater of the absurd, says Achilles, commenting on the months long stoppage of arms supplies from the USA. According to him, fighting on the Eastern Front has never been as brutal as it is now. Since the artillery shell shortage first began to be felt in September, the Ukrainian army has continually lost ground to a relentless and ever-increasing Russian attack. During the winter, the Ukrainians managed to prevent a major Russian breakthrough, but in late February, the Russians launched an all-out offensive on Chasov Yar, Achilles said. With the help of his reconnaissance drones, he saw Russian soldiers massing. I realized they were coming, he said, but without enough artillery shells, the Ukrainians could not hit Russians near supply lines, as they usually did to prevent an attack. According to Achilles, the Russians moved step by step, taking one position after another. This happened after we were low on ammunition and our artillery had nothing to fire, he continued. According to him, the cannons fired only two shells a day, when they should have fired at least 30.